I saw for the first time ever uh, Super Bowl tickets. They obviously you get your Super Bowl ticket and they would send you out some commemorative package or whatever. And now Super Bowl tickets have been digitized. And if you bought, you know, row M seat one through five for your family to go to the Super Bowl, you now have a digital NFT that says you were at the Super Bowl. Why does that matter? How could that be valuable? Well, first, the if we're just talking NFL specifically, but also just like clubs and, and communities, there's always going to be the insane fans of every community, whether I love the NFL or I've been drinking Coca-Cola my whole life. How many people collect Coca-Cola fridges and Coca-Cola clocks and Coca-Cola this and that, right? That don't even make sense. It's the same thing with the NFL, but some people, they want to have that digital companion. Uh, artists in the NFT space are doing this where they create the NFT and also the physical piece and you get both, right? I want to, there, there's all kinds of use cases for the art. It's probably like, hey, I want to put this digital art of the NFT in my real house, but also in my, my metaverse room of some sort, right? There's the flexing component to it, right? I was at this Super Bowl, but the cool thing is that if it's actually issued by the NFL, now the NFL has a direct access or they, they, can, they can directly verify the holders of this NFL token so let's say let's say they gave this NFT out to all 60,000 people who attend the Super Bowl, right? They could theoretically create another NFT that gives them direct access to buying next year's Super Bowl at a discount, right? They're like, if you hold this NFT, you get first access to buy the Super Bowl ticket. And you have to have this NFT in your wallet. And they can do something called token gated where you can't access that registry unless the NFT is there. And so what is that worth on the open market, right? If you get direct access to the Super Bowl. Yeah, if you get first right of refusal for 50-yard line, fifth row, seat one, if you have that for the rest of your life, theoretically, and you have first right of refusal, you still have to pay for the ticket, right? The NFL is still getting their ticket price. They're still probably getting some commission if you sell that NFT to somebody else to have the rights for that. But this gets into like some crazy haves and haves nots, right? Like we could get to a point in the future where nobody could buy a ticket to the Super Bowl unless you have that $50,000, $500,000 NFT. Like, it's kind of crazy, right? Right, and then the NFL could tie a royalty 1%. So every time that that uh, that right of refusal for all 60,000 tickets, they get a 1%, right? The, the, this is where you get into the, again, greater full theory, speculation, whatever. What is that worth? If I don't, if I don't watch football, I probably don't give a shit. Maybe, maybe I'm rich and I just want to go to the Super Bowl once, so I'm going to buy that from them, and then I'll sell it late, at a later date. What, I'm somebody who's like, I'm going to go to the Super Bowl every year. I'll pay a million dollars for this, right? Because I know the Super Bowl, I, I love football. I think the Patriots are going to go to every Super Bowl. So this is kind of like my way to get closer to the team. Or I'm just an investor and I'm like, hey, I know this is going to appreciate every year. And I'm going to hold on to this. And I will, my, my top line, I've ran the analytical models and I will pay top notch $120,000 Nothing more, but I'll pay less for it, right? Because I know over 10 years, I can buy the ticket, sell it for $8,000 and make my money back in 10 years, right? So yeah. there's so many different ways to look at it. But the NFL, as you mentioned, is still making money. And then they're also making royalties on that that sale. So it's just the NFT allows, it, it opens up so or unlocks so much value that hasn't existed to secondary markets. The, the, when you think of a secondary market, you're thinking traditionally of tickets, right? right. Then shoes kind of became like the top secondary market. What if you did a, a, a secondary market for hotel rooms, right? What if you're the win and you take, we'll, we'll say, we'll just use their VIP services, right? You take all of their, their suites and you issue NFTs against that and you sell that, that room, that suite, that $10,000 room as an NFT every day for the next year. So essentially you have 365 NFTs that represent this suite at, uh, at the win over every day. Now you allow investors to come in, buy the room up, and then maybe sell it at a later date, right? But then now the, the hotel room is that now having the room sold every day, right? So you get a right. set, they, they're having their issue solved. You allow the secondary market. The issue with this then does become, and people have brought this up that now you're kind of commoditizing everything and right. then you kind of are going to, to uh, only further increase the, the, uh, wealth the wealth gap, right? Yeah. But then it also gives those who are in the lower class who maybe just see the opportunity, right? Like they're like, oh, my... They're, they're trying to do this with music NFTs, right? So, oh, I see this independent artist who lives in my city. He's issuing his song 
as an NFT, which uh, which equals 10% income revenue off of the song throughout his career. That person then becomes Kanye West, and now you just got one of his first songs, and you own ten percent of it, right? And now you're you've made probably a lot of money off of that, and it, and they didn't need much money to buy into it, but they had the foresight because they were around the area and they liked right. it, right? So there's there's all these cool dynamics and opportunities. That's why I do think it's the greatest transfer of wealth in human history through the different like tokenized systems, NFTs or fungible tokens which is just all the cryptocurrencies. And fungible tokens is, is basically all the dollar systems that exist. Yen, uh, pound, dollar. It's just irreplaceable money within each other. Yeah. So that's like, once you start specking on this, you're like, holy crap, like this could be crazy. But it definitely, there can be some stark implications on this as well. So it, it's, just, it's just tied. Is it the greater fool theory? Is it revolutionary? Is it, is, does, is could it, it, could it be both? Could it be both? Is this the zero to one Peter th Peter Thiel type moment that everyone says, right? Bitcoin was kind of zero to one. You had the iPhone was zero to one. It's like these tech, these technologies vastly improve society. They improve innovation, the progression of, of human civilization. Is, is our NFTs one of these zero to one or is it the greater fool theory? And yeah. uh, I think in early days of any technology, everyone always thinks it's going to be the greater fool theory. Look at like the dot-com bubble, 2001. Pets.com was like the most... A uh, valuable company at one point in time went under. Amazon uh, depreciated 99% stock value during the dot-com bubble. And now it's the most valuable company in the world. And Amazon has vastly improved uh, human society, at least in America where it exists, right? right. Like it, it's made everyone's life better. D d granted and, and excluding your opinions of the political feeling around billionaires and stuff like that it's it's without a doubt improved society so i think right. we're kind of now in the stages with with nfts uh we've gotten past that i think most people are pretty certain that bitcoin will succeed and ethereum will succeed now it's like these other technologies that are utilized on it are those just ways to make money on it or is it something that's also going to improve everybody's lives